I had no idea this happened to your son. We, we could tell us the we story. We couldn't talk about it. We couldn't talk about it. But Is that right? For the for the reasons that I laid out in the piece. Mm. Until when could you talk about it? Yesterday. Uh, the, 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 the the moment he was sentenced that unleashed me, uh, because up until that moment, uh, you you felt so much pressure on him because of his conservative pedigree that uh, you feared that if you said anything public, it would be used against him during the trial. And so I kept I kept silent for what, two and a half years on this. Uh, but wow, now that that is been time. sentenced, now I can speak out. That is a long time of knowing that injustice is happening and not being able to say anything. And, right, and, watching, us, uh, and what, watching one charge after another being piled on top of the charges that they, they, they had initially. What happened to your son, or what did your son do on January 6th? He was one. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, the, the article points out he was not a political person in that he doesn't belong to any political party. Uh, his only participation was participating in a prayer group that prayed daily for America. Uh, but he was one of those who entered the Capitol and in, in the whole melee of things, he broke two windows on the way in. He didn't do anything in the Capitol. He walked around and he left. He was charged with obstruction like everybody else was. He was charged with breaking the two windows, felony charges. Um, and then all the corollary things that come with entering the Capitol, going into different rooms, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so those were the charges against him. On, on, the, on, the, on the proverbial eve of the trial, they hit him with the big one. And, and we knew that was going to happen, especially if the obstruction charge was dropped. Because if you drop the obstruction charge, then all you've got is people entering the Capitol just like people enter the Capitol who support Hamas, just like the Code, P, code Pink people who disrupt the Capitol, and they would get the same kind of punishment that, that these people would in a fair judicial system, and that means misdemeanors and $45 fines. That's what this thing would have been had the obstruction charge been, been dropped. So I told my son, get ready, because they're gonna come up with something else, uh, just in case we didn't know what it was. So on the eve of the trial, boom, they hit him with an assault charge against a policeman which is just shocking to us to know the Bozell family is to know the respect that the Bozell uh, family has for the police. So I'm looking for the footage. We're to, looking forward to seeing the footage. When you see the footage, it is not to be believed. It is grainy footage from a distance that shows my son on one of the decks of the Capitol standing next to a policeman he will tell you he was standing and talking to that policeman on and off for two minutes. A crowd started collecting on the steps to his left. So when it reached mass size, somebody said push, or there was something that was said, and the whole crowd, like dominoes, lurched forward. Well, who do they get to at the top of the steps, standing next to a cop? My son, who turns and is pushed toward the policeman. The judge himself acknowledged, you couldn't even tell if my son even touched the policeman. So how could that be an assault charge? Well, that's when you learn that an assault charge doesn't mean necessarily attack. It can also mean impede or interfere. And the fact that he was at the front of the line, he was impeding and interfering with the, the policeman's duty Bam, guilty of assault. So now you have a guilt, and, and, and my son didn't protest, didn't argue the other charges, except for obstruction. Uh, but he broke two windows, and, and there were two felony charges, and he acknowledged he broke two windows, and he was willing to pay the price for having done that. Um, on After the, the conviction, now you have a conviction, a conviction for an assault on a policeman, obstruction, breaking two windows, and all the other corollary uh, charges. On the eve of sentencing, they hit him with the most um, uh, incredible 
charge imaginable. Uh, uh, terrorism enhancement. They claim on. that what he did was an act of terrorism. Ergo, this man is father of three, of three girls, who has never had a criminal record higher than a traffic offense, was now to be equated with Osama bin Laden. When they went to sentencing, the judge refused to accept that. They argued and argued for it. He refused to accept it. But then he pointed something else out, that the prosecution had lied. Deep, deep in the files, he caught something that everyone had missed. In a footnote, he caught the price tag of one of the windows broken, $847. That made it a misdemeanor, not a felony. So the Justice Department had invented a crime. Not the judge then and there offered a mistrial on that charge, and we didn't take it. Um, but they had lied, and they had invented the charge. So at the end of it, my, for what my son did, breaking two windows, one of them a misdemeanor, one of them a felony, in a just system, he would be charged just like anybody else would be charged. Restitution, uh, uh, probation, misdemeanor, because he had no criminal record. Instead, he got almost four years in prison charged for this. At the same time, you have got thousands upon thousands of Black Lives Matter and Antifa people who set fire to city after city after city in 2020, burned down, killed cops, uh, all manner of other people, $1.2 billion in damage, the highest in history, and yet there are probably just a handful of people who've ever been charged with that. So is this a system of justice? But no, it's not. Is this fair? No, it's not. Talking to Brent Bozell, founder, president of the Media Research Center. When was the sentencing? Uh, the sentencing was about three weeks ago. I guess, I guess um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, he will be told when to report to prison. I want to say something that the, that the judge, John Bates, was a fair man. I, I obviously, I disagree forcefully with the sentence. Um, but I, I, I saw a judge who was striving um, to, to, to be fair um, to, to both sides, uh, witness the fact that he uncovered the lie from, from the prosecution. Um, so, so I don't harbor ill will to this judge. I sure as hell do to the, to, to the prosecution. You know, here's one thing. Has anybody ever found out, and nor, no, I'm going to say, we're, we're never going to find out, what the price tag of this prosecution of J6 defendants mm. is? How many hundreds of millions of dollars the Justice Department has spent on the prosecution of J6 people? My guess it w is, it is, is jaw dropping, but in this con in, the, in this government where there's no acknowledgement of anything when it comes to spending money, I don't think we'll ever ever know. Uh, but I'd love to have an answer to that question. Yeah. And, and man hours spent yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay, I have I have a ton of questions, Brent. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, first, how how's your son doing right now? Well, you know, she, she's uh, he's got great, great faith, and that faith is carrying him. He's got a wonderful wife, um, and she's carrying him as well. As well, He's got three daughters, um, and, and they're, they're just the most lovely little girls you could possibly imagine. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's accepting it. Now, uh, he's appealed, and, and um, uh, he, just, he just filed last week the, uh, the, the forms uh, to appeal this case. I'm not I'm not familiar uh, enough with the with the um, particulars of that appeal to comment on them, but he is appealing. 